My name is Kara Purvis, and I'm the Global Service Delivery Leader for Baker Hughes Drill Bits. And I'm excited to talk to you today about one of the most exciting things going on in drill bit technology in recent years, and certainly something that's enabling us as Baker Hughes to take energy forward by continuing to push the drilling performance limits of our customers. And that's the introduction of shaped cutter technology. But I'm not just going to talk to you about one shape that's pushing ROP and footage limits globally, but an entire portfolio of shapes that's, a, that's specifically designed, tested, engineered, modeled, manufactured, and then optimally placed in our drill bits in order to deliver specific drilling performance for specific drilling applications. So let's get started. We are certainly at the cutting edge of shape design. Starting on the far side, if you look at the Stabilis X cutter, that's really your go-to cutter for impact applications. So think about your tough, interbedded applications. It's got a really durable edge that helps to mitigate against breakage, chipping, and that kind of damage that is typically seen that limits the amount of footage you can get with your drill bit. The Shockwave cutter also has a really durable edge. It's really good for those interbedded formations, but then it has that recess in there that helps to manage uh, the friction at the cutter and reduce against thermal degradation that sometimes plagues our cutters. The Stay Cool Cutter is a really great cutter for the high abrasive sandstone cutters. You can see it has a recess in there that also helps to reduce friction. It keeps the cutter cooling tip cooled longer so that you don't see any of those micro, micro fractures and wear that is typically seen in sandstone applications. Our prism cutter is the first of the point loading cutters, and so that's really ideal for helping to improve drilling efficiencies. So think of those applications where you have limited weight on bit, limited power into the system. The, the point loaded cutters help to take advantage of the power that you do have downhole and available to you. And then it's got the recess in there, again, to help with the, the cooling and reduce the friction at the cutter tip. And then last, we have the apex cutter. That's another cutter, great for point loading. It's ideal for areas where you have high mud weight environments or low weight on bit uh, constraints, some of those really tough and ductile formations to help improve the drilling performance. But it's a long road to get to these shapes. So I want to talk to you next a little bit about the process by which to get here. Because you can't cut corners on testing and modeling. So every cutter starts off with getting 3D modeled. So like the images you see here, we start with the 3D model, and then we run them through our FEA. So we look at the stresses on the cutters in terms of where they're getting loaded. So if you see here, you have the apex cutter and the prism cutters. And you can see in the black area where the, the cutters are being loaded, this is where the formation is applying the pressure and the cutters are shearing the rock. And then around that you see the orange and the red, those are the areas of the highest stress on the cutters. And you see that dissipate out into the green where it's a lot, um, the stresses are dissipated. So it's really ideal here that we look at how the stresses are being controlled so we can create a stable platform cutter for our drill bits. Once the cutters are modeled, then we move into the prototypes phase where we'll, we'll actually build a few of these. And then we'll run those in our downhole simulator where we're able to look at the different pressures, formations, weight on bits that are applied to the cutters to see how they perform. So what I'm going to show you guys next are those cutters in that test lab, uh, and you can watch the cuttings coming off the face of those. So this is the apex cutter. And you'll see these long ribbons of formation coming off of it. And again, we're able to change up the formation types. We're able to change the pressures to try to simulate those downhole conditions. Here's another view from that high-speed camera where you can see the cuttings coming off the face of this cutter. And so we can see what formations it works best in. This next video is of the prism cutter. You can see how those cuttings are a little different. You no longer see those longer ribbons, but you start to see some of the smaller cuttings coming off the face of that. Once that piece is done, we'll take those cutters and we'll put it into an actual drill bit. And then we'll model how that cutting structure comes together with the entire drill bit in an app a potential application. So this is a look at drilling from one formation to another formation. And we can see the loads that are acting upon those cutters as it cuts away the rock. 
you can see some of the grooves that are created from the cutters taking away some of that rock and extracting some of the rock. So we can see how that entire cutting structure works together. We can mix and match these cutters as well so that we can really dial in for the performance we're looking to see. So jump into a few examples. Coming to us from Argentina, we have an application where it's a slim hole, uh, long horizontal length, run on rotary steerable. So typical challenges here are around drilling efficiencies and you have a, a limited amount of power that you're getting to your bit and you're really trying to maximize the ROP as you're drilling that section. We took a standard bit with standard planar cutters and then put some prism cutters in it like you see here. You see those throughout the primary cutting structure. We modeled that in our modeling software and we fine tuned it until we got the, the aggressiveness that we really wanted for the application. From there we deployed it and the results were fantastic. We had not one, but six consistent one run laterals that on average performed 13% faster an ROP versus the average of the offsets, making this the new go-to bit for the Vaca Muerta shale. Up in Canada, we have a directional drilling application. In this application, we're running a positive displacement motor on an AKO. Typically, we see uh, interbedded formations, and so we end up getting a lot of chipping and breaking of the cutting structure, and it's not unusual to pull the bits for penetration rate. So the challenge here is really how do we how do we improve the life of the, the bit so that we can get even more footage? What we did was we introduced the shockwave cutters to the primary cutting structure. And so you can see those along those primary blades, the shockwave. And that helped to give some durability to the cutting structure. And it also, those cutters reduced the friction. And so it allowed for better cooling and, and less breakdown of those cutting structures. Behind that, we introduced our apex cutters. So you can see the apex cutters in those backup locations so that as the primary cutting structure began to wear, you'd have the apex cutters engaged, and that offered a level of drilling efficiency so that your ROP wasn't dropping. Results here, we ended up with 76% improvement in meterage, which allowed us to completely eliminate one of the planned bit runs that we'd, we had planned for that section. Ultimately, this ended up saving the operator 26 hours of drilling time because they weren't having to trip and, and change out bits. And then our last example comes to us from the Caribbean. It's another directional application, this time on rotary steerable, where they're drilling from about 30 degrees out to 80 degrees. And so here it's really crucial to meet the, the drilling trajectory and target plans there. So we've got to minimize vibrations. We've got to maintain good borehole. We've got to have really smooth drilling so that we can meet the directional objectives. What we did here was we introduced our apex cutter into that cone and nose location of the cutting structure. And that gave it some extra drilling efficiency. And then we took our Stabilis X cutter and we put that in the centermost position of the bit, as well as out in the shoulder area, because those were the areas that were most prone to some of the impact damage that we'd been seeing. Results here, an incredible 85% reduction in stick slip. And so that improved vibrations coupled with the drilling efficiency ultimately ended up in a 30 foot an hour increase in the overall ROP and saved the customer $688,000. And they were extremely happy with this one uh, compared to the, the offset well. Now, while these are just three examples, we have a long legacy and history of shaped cutter runs. We've attained over 50,000 runs in over 80 different countries with our different shaped cutters varieties, making it no surprise why we're, we're able to deliver value to our customers by improving their ROPs, extending the bit lives, and drilling longer, faster runs for the customers. So with that, thank you guys for listening.